We've made it to Mariah Island and it's infested with wombats. <laughs> They're very single-minded. There's just shells everywhere. It's crazy. It, I've never seen anything like it. It feels ancient. Oh, that is just... Welcome to Free Range Sailing. Join us as we sail around Australia, visiting its wild places in our 30-foot, 50-year-old sailing boat, Marul. Living off the land and sea while sailing a yacht that costs less than a new car, we show that it's possible to have big adventures with a seaworthy boat on a very modest budget. After an incredible few days at our Snuggler Lankridge on Shouten Island, it was time to continue our exploration down Tasmania's east coast. Never miss an episode of Free Range Sailing again. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button to stay notified of all our upcoming releases. I got bit by a wombat. <laughs> it wasn't aggressive, it was just curious. It just was sniffing my foot and then it bit my foot. <laughs> We've made it to Mariah Island and it's infested with wombats. <laughs> it is, they're everywhere. <laughs> They're very cute and they're kind of tame, but you do have to be careful because they might accidentally bite you. <laughs> I think it's in the nature of wombats just to not really care what's going on as long as they can just keep eating. So they sort of appear tame. So if you love wombats, come to Tassie, come to Mariah Island. Island. Wombats are small, stout marsupials built for digging with short legs, compact heads, short broad feet and strong claws. Like all marsupials, they have a pouch for their young, but unlike the rest, their pouch faces backwards, which makes for a rather peculiar sight. Wombats are not the only native Australian critters populating this place, which is known by many as Tasmania's Noah's Ark. On the run are Cape Barren Geese, they didn't seem threatened by our presence at all. This 
this shy creature is a paddy melon, a close relation of the kangaroo and the wallaby. This is one of the smallest of the macropods. Are you patting him? He's just found like one little patch of grass in the dirt. <laughs> they are very single minded. <laughs> we were also pleased to see a very healthy population of forester kangaroos and wallabies on the island. We're going to go for a walk. Um, it can either be four and a half k's or it might be 11 k's. You don't know. We're going to make it up as we go along because there's a few things to see on the island. Um, but before we go, first aid kit. This is left over from when we were in the Kimberleys and we, we would each carry um, you know something just to patch, our, patch each other or ourselves up in case of problems. So we can still use that here for Tassie because it's mainly focused on um, dealing with sprains and strains and also snake bite because both of them require uh, strapping you know the casualty immobilizing a limb um, and keeping them nice and still so we've got a bandage here which handles snake bite and sprains there's a large bandage there to handle you know like trying to control any bleeding but this is an important bit here for Tassie which is a thermo uh, you know reflective accident blanket so it's got a lot of uses um, if, if we have to immobilize someone here it just starts to sprinkle with rain or just even if a cold change comes you really want to be able to, to keep your very unhappy person warm so they don't get unhappier <laughs> so there's heaps of people walking around here but carrying a first aid kit is probably still a pretty good idea because we are traipsing around in the bush For 40,000 years, Mariah Island was populated by Aboriginal people of the Oyster Bay tribe, who called the land Toara Maramona. So cute. <coughs> Since the arrival of Europeans, the island was twice used to establish a penal colony, as well as pasture for grazing livestock and establishing a cement works, among other things. Although many of the old buildings remain, the island is now a wildlife sanctuary and national park. In 1825, a penal colony was set up in Darlington. It was the second to be established in Tasmania, or Van Diemen's Land, as Tasmania was then known. Due to frequent escape attempts, the convict settlement closed in 1832, but reopened again in 1842, when the number of prisoners on mainland Tasmania had increased so significantly that further accommodation was required. It was during this second period that the convict settlement expanded dramatically, with a second convict station being set up at Pointe Lazure to house another 800 convicts on the southern end of the island. This is all that now remains of the Pointe Lazure settlement. In the 1880s, the island was also leased to an Italian silk merchant, Angelo Bernacchi, who planted 50,000 grapevines and established the cement works.
At the peak of high industry on the island, there were over 500 people living here, and many of the old convict buildings were repurposed for commercial use. This engine house was built by Bernacki to drive the circular saws, chaff cutters, lathes and all the mechanical works requiring the use of steam. It became an essential part of the cement works that were fully operational on the island by 1889. Raw limestone rock was burnt into clinker in this giant kiln as part of the cement works operation. The clinker was then crushed into a powder by a stamping battery which was powered by a steam boiler and engine located in this room. the fossil cliff so this is um, just lots and lots of sedimentary layers laid down from about 300 million years ago? Yep, 300 million years ago, from a good 100 million years it was laid down. <laughs> so as the, um, you know like all of it, we're really high up at the moment but obviously it was underwater and the water was way way higher again and as it, as it rose and sediments kept sort of dropping down just just layers and layers of fossilised yeah. shells. It's one of the richest deposits in the world. Yeah. And you, everywhere you look, it's just... There's just shells everywhere. It's crazy. It, I've never seen anything like it. It feels ancient. Yeah. And what's the ocean down there is probably about 12, 13 metres beneath us. <laughs> so, you know, like... And it goes on again another mm. 10 to 15 metres above us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like... All underwater at one stage. Look, there's massive scallops up there, about yeah. two meters above our heads. Yeah, <laughs> it's they're incredible. big, um, big shellfish, huh? Yeah, they're old. Mm. <laughs> Things got big back then. <laughs> Doesn't look like they've changed their body plan all that much. Like we can easily recognise these. We're about halfway up to Bishop and Clark. It's in C L E R K. Yeah. So there's twin peaks up there, I think. One's big and one's smaller. Yep. I'm so, a bit tired. We haven't really done any hiking for a while. <laughs> we're feeling it, folks. We're <laughs> it's used good to for a, us. We're used to a zero gravity <laughs> environment on the yacht half the time when we're coming back down and then in the water. And my sunglasses are fogging up. I'm steaming. She's your new pesky was pretty hot. <laughs> Steaming hot. <laughs> Oh, I can see, I can see the top.
Da var det inte Nej. We made it. We totally made it. There was a bit of a scramble at the end there. You know, as we were climbing up, what I just want to say is thank you for any of the rangers that have maintained this because I saw all the way up to the top here there was a few chainsaw cuts in some of those trees. Yep. So it was rough for us just carrying camera gear, let alone a little Husqvarna or something like that. <laughs> so, Good work. But it's spectacular. It is. It's stunning up here. So. No one said they had to be smart. No, you got ahead of it. In the 1970s, between 20 and 30 wombats were introduced to Mariah Island from Flinders Island as part of a conservation effort. There were reportedly wombats on the island prior to their introduction, but scientists are unsure of how many exactly there were. They now number in the thousands on this island sanctuary. Maybe they do fall off cliffs every now and then. Thanks for hanging out with us in the Wombats this week. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel as it really helps get our video out to a wider audience. We look forward to spending time with you again next week. Bye for now.